Are autistic people able to experience empathy for others? Stay tuned. In movies and TV, you often see individuals with autistic traits, whether those traits are diagnosed or not, as being hyperlogical, unemotional beings. Frequently, they have trouble with understanding the viewpoints of others and what they may be going through. A total lack of empathy. Data from Star Trek, the next generation, lacks an emotion chip that makes him less human. And Many of his storylines are centered around trying to find experiences that make him understand emotions and therefore become more human. Since empathy is such an important part of human social experience, allowing for social bonding and setting the stage for moral foundations of reciprocity and care for others, a lack of empathy among autistic people would be alarming. Well, today we're gonna bust one of the biggest myths about autism, and I'm gonna tell you the truth about autistic empathy and walk you through what the science actually says. And then we'll introduce something called the double empathy problem. Spoiler alert, yes, autistic people experience empathy, perhaps even more deeply than others, but it's not expressed in the same way as it is in neurotypical people. But I promise the full story is really interesting, so let's get into the science. I pointed over there, but there's only one camera. <laughs> First, to study something, we have to define it. So what is empathy? Now we could do a whole series of videos on what empathy is and how it's defined and measured and arguments back and forth, but the nutshell version is that empathy is the ability to feel what others are feeling, to understand others' emotions, and I can adapt my behavior to reflect your experiences. Some researchers distinguish between cognitive empathy, my ability to understand that you are experiencing an emotion and identify it, and affective empathy or emotional empathy, where I take on that feeling and I feel it myself to some degree also. So if I see that you drop your ice cream cone and start crying, if I can identify that you feel sad, I'm expressing cognitive empathy. But if I also feel sad because you are sad, I'm expressing affective empathy. Cognitive empathy involves my general regard for your well-being and wishing that you would avoid suffering. Whereas emotional or affective empathy requires my own emotions to be activated as well. Empathy develops early in humans and is observed in a variety of animals, especially our closest relatives. Now, anytime we talk about anything in psychology, we have to be mindful of the difference between an internal experience, thoughts and feelings, and expression of those experiences in terms of behavior. There is a difference between experiencing an emotion and expressing an emotion. I can feel happy and not show it, or I can fake a smile to show it, but not actually feel it. So this is the biggest problem with the research on autism and empathy, confusing a lack of expression for a lack of experience. Just because I don't smile doesn't mean I'm not happy. Just because I don't cry doesn't mean I don't feel sad. And just because data doesn't show anger when this asshole kills his friend, that doesn't stop him from pulling the trigger to waste the guy. But because researchers don't have direct access to the contents of your mind, they must rely upon some form of behavior to measure empathy. It turns out that this caused the science of autism to go astray for decades, claiming that autism was primarily a problem of empathy. Now, I dug through a pile of this old, but shockingly not that old, research on autism, and I can tell you it did not age well. Our current understanding of autistic empathy began to emerge within just the last 10 to 15 years, and if I'm honest, probably a lot more recently than that, and we've got a long way to go still. I'm gonna read a couple of passages so you can see what the research used to look like, but be warned, it's offensive by today's standards. In this study from 1992, they open by saying that the most striking thing about autism is a lack of empathy. But they also said this a few paragraphs later, so <laughs> that didn't age well. They had a small sample, less than 20, autistic and neurotypical children watch video clips of kids experiencing emotions and then took measures of what we would now call cognitive and affective empathy. Now, on a 10-point scale, they reported that the autistic kids scored 
1.36 points lower than a neurotypical kid on cognitive empathy on average, and 1.27 points lower on affective empathy. So about one point lower on their scales, not a huge difference. In fact, the authors write that they're surprised at how well the autistic kids did, but then of course go on to discuss the severe deficits that autistic people have in empathy. In this study from 1997, 20-month-old babies were studied using a variety of behavioral measures. For example, they would have an adult hit their thumb with a toy hammer and pretend to be hurt. They would measure empathy by scoring whether the child looked at the person's face, at their hand, uh, and whether the child seemed upset via their own facial expression. They tested 10 autistic babies, and by the way, it's really unusual to diagnose autism that early, but they claim to have done it successfully, and they compared them with 19 neurotypical children. They found reduced empathy in their autistic babies compared to neurotypicals. Now, studies from this era tend to have small sample sizes and, more importantly, rely upon measurements of empathy that don't tell you what the person is experiencing, only what they are expressing. There are a bunch of similar examples, but the important thing is that studies like these led to the proposal in the early to mid-90s that autism should be considered part of a whole new class of disorders, disorders of empathy, along with OCD, Tourette's, and anorexia. Fast forward to this paper from 2009 to see how views had started to change. Adam Smith argued for something called the empathy imbalance hypothesis. The idea is that both affective empathy and cognitive empathy are beneficial for the survival of the species, but they constitute separate processes and therefore can be selected on by natural selection separately. Most people employ a blend of both types of empathy depending on the situation, with affective empathy driving things like self-sacrificing behaviors that protect the group, while cognitive empathy allows for better competition among peers. A psychopath, however, is able to use their high cognitive empathy and low affective empathy to exploit and deceive people without feeling bad about it, and thus that gives them a competitive advantage. So what about autism? Davis looked at data showing that autistic children show more facial expressions than neurotypicals in some emotional tasks. Adults with autism show more activity in facial muscles when seeing expressions of happiness and fear. Now, one advantage of measuring things like electrical signals from the muscles or the skin is that it can detect emotional activation that you can't see just by looking. Autistic children sometimes refuse to look at images of distressed people, and you can measure heightened emotional arousal through skin conductance responses. Davis also considered that autistic adults reported that they were highly distressed in response to the suffering of others. If, you know, you just ask them, imagine that. And Davis noted that family members of autistic people report that they are highly sensitive to the emotions of others. Thus, the argument goes that autistic people may tend to be lower in cognitive empathy, but are actually higher in affective empathy. They're actually higher in the kind of empathy that drives you to make personal sacrifices for the good of others, to feel more strongly what others feel, and to be sensitive to the needs of others. Autistic behaviors, such as insistence on routines, could be a way to regulate these intense emotions controlling the environment. A lack of outward expression of emotions, like facial expressions, could also be a way of managing emotions, as well as looking at other people's faces less and making less eye contact with people. So if autistic people have more empathy, not less, why would it have taken over 60 years for researchers to realize it? An editorial in 2019 in the journal Autism helps explain why it's so easy to mischaracterize autistic empathy by breaking it down into steps. In order to show empathy, there are at least four steps. First, you have to notice that someone is feeling something. Autistic people may miss this for a number of reasons. Maybe they pay less attention to others in general. Perhaps even that's an emotional regulation tool, as I just mentioned. Or some have suggested that autistic people tend to focus on one stream of information at a time, meaning they would be less likely to notice the person's outward expressions just because they weren't paying attention to that information. Now, step two is to correctly identify the feeling being experienced by the other person. 
People cry when they're sad, but also when they're happy. People laugh when they're happy, but also when they're intensely frustrated. Autistic people may have a harder time identifying their own emotions, much less those of others, especially those who think differently from themselves. Now, if you do notice the person's feeling and correctly identify it, step three is to feel those feelings. Now, this step, current researchers argue, is not deficient in autistic people and may, in fact, be stronger than in neurotypicals. Finally, step four is to express a response. Now, appropriate responses are strongly determined by social norms, which are established by the non-autistic majority. This may create barriers to neurotypical recognition of autistic empathy. We're going to make a deep dive video on this topic, but recent studies have shown that understanding empathy, or more accurately, misunderstanding empathy, is a two-way street. Autistics tend to understand the emotions and empathy of other autistics better than neurotypicals, but neurotypicals understand the emotions and empathy of neurotypicals better than they do autistics. So to the autistic person, it appears that the neurotypical is the one with the deficit, failing to understand the autistic's experiences and react appropriately. If you watch all 178 episodes of Star Trek TNG, and all four movies, you'll notice that Data definitely cares deeply about things, has likes and dislikes, and expresses creativity, even more conspicuously than the other crew members on the ship. He paints and writes a poem to his cat. Meanwhile, Counselor Troy, the most annoying character on the show, is supposed to be the ultimate empath, and she doesn't even have a cat. She does expect everyone to go out of their way to deal with her wild mood swings. Who's to say that Data is the one that's defective in some way, rather than everyone else who runs around crying all the time but doesn't have a deep connection or appreciation for anything? They don't even have cats. One final question we should consider. Does characterizing autism as a lack of empathy cause harm? The short answer is yes. Whether attempting to link autism with terrorism or questioning autistics' ability to behave morally, mischaracterizing autistic people as lacking empathy dehumanizes them. It opens the door to abuse and the violation of basic human rights. So the next time you hear someone say something about autistic people lacking empathy, it's important to set the record straight. At this point, I'd like to mention that the emotion chip from Star Trek was a disaster, both for Data and for us as viewers. We'd all have been better off without trying to make Data into something he's not. If you want more videos like this one, let us know by hitting the like button, stick around for a minute, and a link to our Autism and Neurodiversity playlist will pop up. Subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Wow, maybe if I put in this emotion chip, I'll finally be a real boy. Maybe we should focus less on making you more like them and focus more on helping them understand you and how amazing you are. Seriously, a super intelligent, super strong crew member immune from radiation and poison, and just because he didn't have a goofy grin or cry all the time didn't mean he didn't have a deep affection for his friends and fellow crew. Why is it up to him to accommodate everyone else? Doesn't it make more sense for all the supposedly more empathetic people to accommodate his needs? They don't even have a cat.